Even with all the progress we made in visual effects, sometimes it is still very hard to create certain VFX scenes. And this is exactly what happened in the Irishman movie that was 10 years in the making due to one single problem. Problem is, by the time I was ready to make the film, Bob De Niro and Al Pacino and Pesci could no longer play these characters younger in makeup. And I said, I don't know, I can't have the actors talking to each other with golf balls on their faces. The problem is, the film goes back and forth in time four times, between different stages in the lives of the actors. So how did VFX artists create such amazing de-aging effects on the faces of the actors without relying on any of the stuff we consider the pillars of VFX work these days? The film takes place from 1949 to 2000, and it goes back and forth in time continuously. The movie was 10 years in the making, with the iconic Martin Scorsese at the helm and his longtime collaborators Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci. In the early stages, tackling the challenges of the scripts all too young and back timeline appeared to be challenging. Thus, leading Martin Scorsese, along with the production crew, Netflix, and ILM to push the boundaries of the visual effects process, a task that required a combination of technology and the support of a dedicated team of enthusiasts. The 76-year-old De Niro embarked on a cinematic time travel journey unlike anything we have seen in film history. This undertaking requires years of collaborative efforts from top industry professionals, including visual effects artists, costume designers, makeup artists, and even sound editors. For years, visual effects artists have been honing the skill of de-aging actors by digitally mapping their performances using dots on their faces. This often involves capturing data with a head-mounted cameras and manipulating the performance through advanced software. A combination of expert makeup work, tracking dots, and the inclusion of younger actors in key scenes creates a sort of digital paint box in post-production. This approach has been successfully employed in crafting younger versions of actors like Kurt Russell in The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Samuel L. Jackson in Captain Marvel. The quest for the cinematic fountain of youth for the Irishman began in November 2015, during a dinner in Taiwan between Martin Scorsese and ILM's visual effects supervisor Pablo Hellman. At the time, they were collaborating on the drama Silence, struggling for years to solve the challenges posed by the Irishman. Scorsese sought Hellman's experience on using CGI to depict an actor like De Niro portraying the character at different life stages. While films like The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Tron Legacy, and Star Wars Rogue One had dabbled in similar digital techniques, Hellman recognized that pushing the boundaries for the Irishman required the development of entirely new technology. I got on the phone with ILM and I said, I got the project. <laughs> the first thing that Dennis Miran said to me is, this is too risky, don't do it. Right. I said, well, it's, this is the way you felt when you did Jurassic Park. And he just went like, okay, fine, you got me there. Hellman, the visual effects supervisor for the movie, adopted the idea of a three-camera rig. The main camera in the center was flanked by two Alexa mini cameras gathering gigabytes of infrared information without the need for traditional motion capture dots. Afterwards, he processed the footage through a basic version of ILM's de-aging software referred to as Flux. In this movie, the actor's faces and hands underwent digital de-aging. This technique includes removing lines, lifting eyes, and reducing jowls. However, when it came to de-aging the actors' bodies, they had to resort to employing traditional analog measures. 
Herman explains, because we don't have the markers on their faces, the more data we have, the better chances of recreating the performances we have. So the software takes a look at those three cameras and takes a look at the information that came through the cameras. For the Irishman, Hellman and his VFX team face the unique challenge of de-aging not only De Niro, but also his co-stars Al Pacino, who portrayed Jimmy Hoffa, and Joe Pesci, portraying the crime boss Russell Buffalino. All of this had to be achieved without resorting to elaborate and intrusive performance capture technology, which is very hard. This technology essentially consists of two parts. The first involves capturing a digital double that aligns with the current appearance of the actor performing. The second part is what we refer to as retargeting, which entails taking that performance and placing it in a different context. In this movie, performance is transposed into a younger version of the actor. This could apply to scenarios where an actor is portraying a character that ultimately becomes a creature or an animal. Applying this technology in the present day could allow characters like Gollum from Lord of the Rings and Caesar from the Planet of the Apes movies to deliver much more realistic and lifelike performances. Hellman says Scorsese and De Niro had been making this film for about 10 years, but couldn't until the technology caught up to their vision. And when asked about their reactions to seeing their younger selves, Hellman shared that De Niro's response was a smile. De Niro expressed gratitude, saying you now, you gave me 30 more years in my career. It is really great, a great thing to see. Although the Irishman earned an Oscar nomination for visual effects, Hellman envisions the technology providing actors the freedom to deliver their best performances without being hindered by technology itself. Some viewers and critics found the de-aging effect to be occasionally distracting or less convincing, especially in certain scenes where the characters were portrayed at different ages, and the technology, while groundbreaking, faced challenges in maintaining complete visual realism, leading to debates about its success and impact on the overall viewing experience. Hopefully, in the future, this technology will allow actors the freedom to do their best without tech getting in the way. In addition, the sag after strikes targeting the potential misuse of similar AI-based recreation of actors' likeness prompts the question of how exclusively this technology can be employed before causing harm rather than benefiting the actors. Despite these criticisms, numerous individuals acknowledged the ambitions and scopes of the project and commended the effort to advance the boundaries of filmmaking and visual effects in general. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you are new, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.